Welcome to Trading the Close on this Wednesday. I'm Tony Valier with Verified Investing. Here's what's making headlines today. Amazon completes a $4 billion investment in the AI startup Anthropic. Robinhood launches its first ever credit card with 3% cash back on every eligible purchase and 5% cash back on purchases through the Robinhood travel portal. Trump media stock surges again on the second day of trading. The Baltimore Bridge collapse that is believed to have taken the lives of six people could also cost Carnival Cruise Line $10 million this year. The collapse is forcing many vessels to reroute as traffic into and out of the Port of Baltimore is suspended until further notice. Let's get a check now of where things stand with the markets just minutes before the closing bell. See that rally return today. The Dow up more than 380 points, 0.96 percent. The Nasdaq up 58 points, 0.36 percent. The S&P 500 up 31 points, 0.60 percent. We've got oil up just slightly. We've got gold up more than $14. And then Bitcoin right now at this moment down $1,300. Let's bring in chief market strategist Gareth Soloway. We also have verified trader and crypto expert Paul Sampson. He'll join us in just a moment. But I'd love to start with the S&P, mm -hmm. see where things are because we've continued to watch that wedge yesterday. If I'm correct, did we not break down? We did. And we confirmed, we confirmed it. it. Confirmed the breakdown. So, so basically what the confer confirmation signal again tells us is that the markets have now shifted to expectations of lower action. Now, I'm not saying market investors. Investors are still very bullish. Just the charts have now flipped from probabilities to now favor downside. Doesn't mean every day. For instance, today we're bouncing. But as long as we don't recapture, you generally look to sell the rips versus buy the dips. Okay. So looking at this, check this out. So markets were basically Basically, we opened higher today. We had this higher. This is where we closed yesterday. We had that late day sell off. Higher open, kind of faded Quite a, a gap lot. Too. Yes, that's a big gap right there. Absolutely. This sideways right here. So you can see all day long, kind of just sideways. And then we're getting this beautiful little pop into the end of the day. So kind of interesting to see that end of day move. Could be on people hoping for a positive PCE data on Friday. Um, that's again when the markets are closed. So it's kind of like. A lot of traders are probably positioning themselves today for next week because a lot of them will go away and they're not even going to be in the office tomorrow trading. It should be a very, very light day. Okay. Let's move on to, I heard a lot of talk uh, in the trading room. I kept hearing NVIDIA. NVIDIA. Yes. Yeah, NVIDIA has been a good trading stock today. There have been some great trading opportunities. Early in the day, it had this massive rollover. Look at how many red candles just down, down, down. This is where that rebalancing is going on. So interestingly enough, you think about what was a good performer for the quarter. Well, it was NVIDIA, SMCI, Meta. Those are the stocks that are seeing selling, selling in these last few days because funds, and, and again, to, the best way to do this is an example, right? If you're a fund and you originally at the start of the year had a 5% position, of your portfolio in NVIDIA, NVIDIA is almost up 100%. So now that is a weighting of almost 10% in your portfolio. Well, most fund managers won't feel comfortable holding that much of the stock. So rebalancing means they sell off to bring that percentage of portfolio down. And that's why you get this sell off here. We saw the sell off yesterday. Now today it's bouncing a little bit here into the end of the day. But again, rebalancing will finish up as of tomorrow since the new quarter begins next week. And just on the opposite side of that, take a look at Apple today. Apple's having a robust rally up, up, and away here. But again, what has Apple done for the quarter? Well, if you look at Apple, when the quarter began, it was basically trading around, uh, let's see here. So it closed last year at $192. So this, if this was in a portfolio of a fund manager, this was at, let's say, 5% here. Well, now it's probably down to 3.5% based on the drop. So they have to buy Apple to push it back up towards that 5% weighting. And so that's why, again, you're seeing a robust rally in Apple today. It kind of works in the inverse of what's going on with NVIDIA as these things are rebalanced into quarter end. So kind of cool stuff. As a trader, you look for these type of things to maybe give you a little bit of an edge saying, okay, well, maybe NVIDIA sells versus some of the beaten down big names might actually catch a bid into quarter end. 
event. All right. Some of the other big market movers, Trump Media, GameStop, Robinhood. We mentioned they've got their first uh, credit card. Right. Carnival, Merck, NIO. Um, but Carnival, um, yeah. I'd love to check that one out. Yeah, Carnival. So, again, you can see it's, it's it's been very, very choppy. This is the daily chart now. So, today it opened a little bit lower. It actually has gone green today on the day. The biggest thing here is this is a whole lot of chop. Like, the one thing I see just off just looking at this, there's a trend line here, right? So, it looks like there's a trend line there. And, again, you have a little pivot area of resistance up here. So, it's looking like it's just kind of came down here. And now maybe it'll float back up. And we'll have to see which way it ultimately breaks out of the wedge. The bigger picture, though, again, is that if you go to, like, a monthly chart, you can just see how far this is down from where it was trading in 2017 and 18. This used to be a $70 stock, now trading at 17 So overall, not a whole lot of trading opportunities for me. I mean, maybe it kind of ch chops inside of that wedge pattern we were just looking at. But for the most part, a lackluster day for, for a company that actually had some news this morning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, Gareth. Well, thank you. Unless there's anything else that you um, think is... Um no, I Something. think I think the only things to keep in mind is, and again, we'll we'll talk a little bit about this tomorrow as well. But going into those PCE data numbers, watch the dollar, the ten-year yield, and obviously, I think the S and P futures will be open on Friday morning, but uh, but the stock market won't open at nine thirty until Monday. So so it'll be exciting on on Friday. There's no doubt about it. Well, that news will come out on Friday, but we won't see any movement. So will that movement you think be um, reflected on Monday? Is that yes, what you're yes. For? So okay. so. It could make Monday morning a very volatile open, especially if the numbers, like one way or the other, it's either going to be, let's say, less inflation than expected, where the markets could rip on Monday, or higher inflation, where they could get panicked. Maybe the Fed, again, won't be cutting three times this year, and that's going to be a big concern for the markets. All right, market, uh, market, <laughs> chief market <laughs> strategist, Gareth Soloway, thank you very much. Um, remember, you can always catch Gareth navigate the charts in real time every weekday morning at 9 a.m., on his show. It's called The Game Plan. It airs right here on the Verified Investing YouTube channel, and it will air on Friday because of that PCE data. Gareth will actually do an abbreviated show, about five minutes or so, so make sure you tune in. Um, he will get a reaction to that data. Let's bring in Verified Trader and in-house crypto expert Paul Sampson's in the house. It is Wednesday. Oh, it is all day. So, on, baby. of course, you want to get to some crypto, and um, Bitcoin is always getting all the love. I'd love to see exactly where it's at right now because sure. it looks like it's been kind of hovering around yep. that uh, 68,000, 69,000 mark. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's definitely been a little bit of an emotional roller coaster. And the reason I say that is because most people uh, get very excited or very worried at one level. And yes. that's pretty much give or take here, but it's like basically 69,200, which was that 2021, I don't have it pulled up here, but the, huh. the old all time high. Yeah. yeah. We've basically, you know, kind of been just dancing around here, right? Just very much so just ranging around the whole time. You get a few days above it, it seems like it's gonna continue up. You get more, a couple days back below, everybody starts like, you know, hyperventilating. Um, <laughs> It's, it, but it's it, so true. It, but really, ever, it really has been uh, an interesting, you know, to see as, as a trader. Unless you're Michael Saylor. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's not holding for him. He's, he he yeah. only worries when it, it starts dropping because then he can't buy the top again. So, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, for, for me, though, just looking at this is the daily chart. Uh, really simple uh, little outlook that I've been looking at for the last few days. Once again, that, that key level being that 69,200, which we're living back below once again. Uh, as far as a trade, you know, the trades were going these last few days here. I pointed out a thing last week, right? Like the one, the one trade, a trade that I always look for, you know, as far as, far as like a day, you know, a daily move yeah. uh, is when we come up and we take the previous high or low. Uh, you came up right here on a daily basis, a couple days, uh, this is, I guess, a week ago, maybe two ago, but this is when we came up to 73, 74,000, and you had a really big move to the downside here. You did the same thing right here, right? This was our daily high. We swept it, came back down. This was our weekly average at the time. And just in general, like, it, it, as far as, like, the, the little moves here, it's it's so easy to, like, kind of dissect them. Grant, granted, the, the bigger picture here is still hard to play out. Like, is it going to drop back to 50? Are we going to go straight to 80 sure. to 100? Um, but yeah, as far as, you know, the last few days here would go, I mean, we've just been really range bound and, you know, it's really holding around that region. And once again, what did you get here? We had a high, we took yesterday's high, got a little move down. We took the high again today, <laughs> we're back down to lower. Um, so for me, you know, as far as the, those, those weekly averages go, which, you know, you can't necessarily bank on them every single week. They don't hit all the time. Uh, it's just something to be aware of. Uh, but this one was one, this one was one. Uh, and then for this week, the average of price is coming in like 65, I know that's a little higher, but like 65 and a half, something like that. So to come back down to that region and kind of live around there and get another bounce is definitely on the table. Okay. Um, 
when I when I bring up that that old box that we were looking at, that 56k, 52k, you know, if we start living down below these regions into the end of the quarter, right? So this is a big thing. I, you know, Gareth really brought up a big point. A, the stock market closed Friday. The end of the quarter is coming up. Just like anything else, crypto, anything else like that, we're going to have closures, right? So when you look at the quarterly candles, if you were to bring them up or the monthly, to come up and basically take the all-time high on a quarterly basis and close back below, not a really great picture as far as just on, you know, zooming out, looking at data. You know, 10 years from now, when we look back at it and it's not going to matter what an ETF or yeah, this or that, like it was yeah. just like, oh, it swept up, took the high and you came back down, got a retracement, whatever the case may be. Um, you really want to see how this closes out, like as far as the end of this quarter is going to go. So basically, uh, I guess it would be Sunday, uh, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, first Easter. is on Monday. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. crypto don't, doesn't close. <laughs> so it'll, it'll continue yeah. going through the weekend. So it'll be interesting to see how we go. But yeah, Holidays right now it's just... don't affect this at all. No, it, it doesn't stop. Yeah, okay. it just continues. So it'll be... Just a, like the news. Yeah, it'll yep. be a fun one. So like by the time I come back here next, we, uh, next Wednesday, you know, we'll be in that new quarter. We'll kind of have a little bit uh, of a better picture. Uh, but yeah, you know, to me, it's still at 69,200. You want to see the closures happening. We haven't closed a weekly candle above 69,200 yet. Uh, and if we come up and we, or we, if we close below that for the quarter, it just it just won't look great. Doesn't mean it's a death sentence, but it's just something that, you know, to be aware of as far as just, you know, a technician looking at the chart. So uh, it's very interesting. So uh, as far as the altcoins go, you yeah, know, everything Bitcoin has always seemed to yeah. get the love and respect. Um, do people just feel a little more secure with Bitcoin? So, so Bitcoin drives the market. Um, I know everybody's probably almost tired of hearing about it, like only because the altcoin, there's so many other options. There's like literally 30,000 like altcoins that you yeah. can choose from ethereum is one of them and then basically everything else in crypto is considered an altcoin just like you know you got the the dow and you got the s p and then you got every other stock is pretty much that um however same thing right when we're looking at this little lineup right here if, if the dow and the s p granted they're you know composed of other stocks uh, if they start to pull down obviously the market is in general you have the same idea here if bitcoin pulls back yeah like if, you know if we're looking at you know if i'm anticipating a 10 percent drop out of bitcoin you're probably going to get a 20 and 30 percent drop out of altcoins and vice versa if you're looking to you know see a, a big move up the whole market's going to go up with it so you kind of almost have to constantly gauge bitcoin um, to kind of you know get a vibe or a pulse on the market, so to speak. I know you don't ignore them. You you invest yourself in is Ethereum one. Oh, Ethereum for sure. Yeah, uh, I, I have several. Um, you know, and I, I kind of alternate between. Um, I don't really hold two. Like Ethereum and Bitcoin are probably the two main ones. Uh, I actually don't have any Bitcoin uh, major holds at the moment. A lot of it's in Ethereum and a couple other places. But Bitcoin Ethereum is what I actively trade daily. So you want like, to show Ethereum? Is it doing okay? Yeah, Ethereum's actually doing uh, pretty much the same thing as Bitcoin here. Okay. I actually brought which, up a different chart just, for you today. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm um, open to that. Yeah, so Ethereum is pretty much just doing what Bitcoin's doing. It's not too exciting. Um, everything I've brought up in the last few weeks is pretty much still pretty much where it's at. Still looking for a potential pullback to like 3,000. But This one's doing okay this one's today. Doing, yeah, this one's a really good example of where like Bitcoin's getting a little pullback today. Yeah. And then this has been actually doing really well. Uh, this is Internet Computer ICP. Okay. And uh, it had this huge range that we've been uh, basically sitting in uh, since the end of last year. So we came I've up. I've never heard of this, but that's not saying anything because uh, yeah. <laughs> there's so many. There's many, that right, I'm right. So, still. Uh, and this is actually you know available on Coinbase. It's it's a it's been around for a couple years here. Um, but yeah, we were trading really nicely within this huge range, right? Just kind of see the ups and downs here. Uh, and then the other day, we actually broke out of it right here at 15,000. Got a nice little move up to 21. It took off. It broke into an old range that I just, I don't have highlighted here, but the high of that range comes in like $28. So I do actually anticipate this gets a little bit more upside. However, ideally, we'd want to see, you know, move back to that level right there uh, and then get a bump up. But yeah, a really nice move here out of ICP. Uh, covered it last night on the uh, Crypto Insider as well. And uh, yeah, I just, that's just one I just, you know, instead of talking about all the doom and gloom of Bitcoin, there are some, you know, coins and other uh, assets that are doing really well And you uh, brought up well. a great point. Anybody interested in, in not just hearing about Bitcoin, if you want to explore the others, Paul covers this. Um, you have several shows, yep. um, but one is specific to crypto. Yeah, the Crypto Insider I do on uh, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. and then on Saturday afternoons at 1 p.m. Uh, generally take all the comments, you know, if anybody like wants me to look at something specifically, I look at all those and kind of cover awesome. those on, on Tuesdays. Saturdays a little bit more of a overall like end of the week, so kind of like get a, a weekly game plan in play. Um, but yeah, cover like Bitcoin, Ethereum pretty much all the time. And then usually like three to five altcoins, uh, ones that I see, you know, as, as being potential big movers, maybe ones that have already moved and where to look for. Uh, but yeah, I do that both on Tuesday and Saturday. Fantastic. I love it. He's on TikTok as well. YouTube, our verified YouTube uh, channel. And, all over the place. Um, you, everywhere. Exactly. Yep. And you're on top of it. That's it. We've also got the uh, new uh, Trader's Edge uh, trading That's group, essentially. Course, right? uh, we got a course and the alert service, basically, that is going to be 
be launching here on Verified Investing uh, later this week, if not by the beginning of next week for sure. So uh, people can really understand. Yeah, I, I, bre I break down exactly how I you know you know look at the charts, view it uh, for the course side of things, and then in the uh, alert service, basically, it's not all just only alerts. It's actually like all my analysis. So it'll be setups on multiple cryptos, all the trades I actually do take actively. Um, day trade setups, swing trades, mid to long term holds, okay. all kinds of things. So it'll be a little bit of a, an all in one place. Okay, so keep an eye on uh, out for that. That'll be later this week or early next week Absolutely. for sure. And you'll be back again next that's, week. That's it. Thank you, Paul, very much. We appreciate it. And thank you for watching Trading the Close on this Wednesday. We will see you back tomorrow. Make it a great rest of the day. I was waiting for the whole okay. day. <laughs> okay.